And good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filigera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Tuesday, August 10th, 2021. Picking up where we left off yesterday, I continue to look for the completion of uh, this particular move. And I had been counting it and still will count it as a very bizarre uh, diagonal triangle in a sub minute fifth wave position. And this would be to complete the minute third wave. So I'm not satisfied with that at all. So I took a step back and <clears throat> I am basically okay leaving this as a four, um, but here's where that might change and why. This is all part of the minute third wave and that third wave itself subdivided and extended. So that leads me to go one step further into back to what Elliot himself wrote about what he thought and what happened after he noticed this type of a pattern. He had talked about that the correction that would ensue would always re retrace or correct twice. So it would be retraced twice. And this would be the first, this is the intervening B wave of a correction. And then it goes through and it corrects twice by going back down in the C wave. And with, he also mentioned that in this irregular corrective move, the B wave, would likely go to a new high above the end point for the third wave. Well, that's what's happening too. So I'm taking that step back going like, I don't like this pattern. So I then measured out because if an irregular B wave does have Fibonacci limitations that help us to determine that it is an irregular B wave and how far it could go. And the first, uh, level is that that B wave would travel 1.236 times the length of the A wave. Well, that actually comes in at 4,438.21. And look where it stopped, 4438.25. So it hit it on the nose and backed off immediately. That, that level was basically rejected by the market and it came flying back down. Granted, at the time, the NASDAQ was falling apart. But that was the response, hits the high, and then immediately, because you can see within the same bar, hits that high and comes right off and then slides further. And did come back up, but now I'm thinking, this is wave A, this is wave B. And now let me go back out so you can see how sloppy this is. But first, while I have it here, if indeed we still have one more, because this is the other side of this coin, we still have a probability where the market could just turn right back around and rally strongly again, and this time reach further up to the next level, which is one point. 382, and that comes in right here at 4,441. So we're still within range, striking range of this being four and this being the five to complete that, it, that one step higher, minute third wave. So this is how difficult all this is getting. So before I go back to that, which we must leave open, let me finish the thought on if this is an irregular and what could be coming, all right? So now I've, I've included that while we're here, but I'll show you that count, which would fit. If we're looking for a diagonal triangle, right? That means that it has to wedge. And this really is that wedging. That's the first thing I'll get it. But the count does hold. So we basically have A, B, C, one, A, B, C, two, a, B, C, three, 
A, B, if it comes back down to this level, four, and then shoots to the moon for a five, then I, I would likely label it as such. And this would stay to four and this would stay to five and we would put a three up there wherever it ended up. But other side of that coin, it's already reached 1.236, hit it on the nose. That's one point in its favor that this is the preferred cap. So we have A, sloppy as it is, B, moves to a new all-time high, covered under irregular B wave, what does Elliot say? It retraces twice. Here's the first retracement. The second retracement is coming. Now, one, two. What are we dropping in? A subdividing third wave. Possible. Now I'm gonna go back up to the 30. What does that suggest then? It suggests we come back down to here. So what I'm gonna do, oops. I don't want to do that. I want to remove that drawing. And now I'm going to redo the Fibonacci extensions, which are going to show us what the possibilities are. Because I will give you those, what that, which extension fits the wave that may be in progress. Put that up there at 38.25. Thank you. Okay. So it's off by eh, 25 cents. So if indeed that was A, B, one, two, and we're coming off in the third, we need to, first of all, begin to accelerate to the downside. That's key. The type of the characteristic for the wave that would be in motion is the third. Third waves are normally the longest and the strongest. That says that we tumble. We don't just jack around up and down. We tumble out of these levels. We break these supports. We break below the 200 moving average. We then break below 44.12. What the first stopping point that would meet the Fibonacci uh, level is that when you have a, an irregular B wave and it comes to 1.236 or 1.382, times the length of that A wave, which it did, 1.236, that where it's going to bottom is going to be between 1.382 and 1.618 of that A wave. So we've got, we, from one simple A wave, we get a calculation for an irregular B wave, and then we can add that calculation for the C wave on an extension to that level. And that comes in right here and then right here. So very possible. So here's what I think this hinges on. We may waffle and basically do nothing until tomorrow morning. I mean, we thought we were waiting, waiting, waiting for the, for the employment situation for your last Friday. Now they're waiting, waiting, waiting for more information via tomorrow's CPI. And then they may wait even longer because then we got PPI coming out at the end of the week. So, we, so the market wants to hinge on more information that now has to do with inflation because inflation will A, kill the, kill the NASDAQ as we saw today. They just said, okay, we don't wanna wait for that figure, boom, we're out. And they drove this, they drove the NASDAQ lower and I will be making that update shortly. But back to the S&P, if indeed it has another run to make to complete this cycle or this movement, then it has to go. What could help that along? They're okay with the CPI. They can swallow it, they can handle it, no big deal. It's not gonna cause any upset at the Federal Reserve and the dollar's not gonna get all tweaked here. So they're gonna be okay about it. Um, so here's what I'm saying. If they approve the figure, if they're okay with it, then I expect that the buyers will step back in and they'll, they'll just run with it and we'll know, and then it goes up to that level. Now, if it's gonna be a clean five, we got tons of levels. We have, we have this whole scenario, but then that's just the 1.382 level, right, of this. We go back to the additional measurement that if indeed 
that this was the completion and this is the four, then that's where I think it's gonna come. But if my count is off by even a slight bit and we're in this finishing larger fit, you know, in the minor level, that, that this was Miss Canvas, so this is three and this is four and this is the fifth and we now blast. Well, then we have 4464. I actually don't see that, but I have to include it because the unexpected does happen. Um, but I, for certain, would be looking for at least a rise on any positive sign, a rise to 44, 41, 42, up to maybe 50. And then for it to pull back again because we need to finish that, we need to put in a four, and then we need to rally like there's a golden rainbow. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. Now, downside, they hate the number, and they feel that inflation is for real, and that it is getting worse, then I suspect we drop very quickly, all the way back down into this area. And that would be a fairly solid little Trump lower for the S and P. I, mean, I, I liked that one. That one put a lot of trades and money into people's pockets if you were trading it. And we get the same thing tomorrow. But again, it could happen before we even step into the market uh, on the opening. This could all happen pre-market. And if it does happen totally pre-market, without the participation of a lot of people that trade on the openings in the U.S., it could aggravate it. So we can get there, bounce, and go back. So maybe we come down. Here, bounce, and then reopen, boom, done. So that's what I would look for. And that's where I'm going to leave it for right now. So our possibility of tomorrow is like it either has to jam itself higher or it's going to, I think, jam itself lower. And where I get disappointed is, same thing with the unemployment number, we got a reaction, but boy, it, it wasn't like we were off to the races. It wasn't like we were doing anything. It just kind of walked itself down, walked itself up, and walked itself back down. So. We'll see, but at least we can be prepared. We have lower levels, we have upper levels. Trade what's in front of you, trade with your moving averages, and hopefully it won't be a chop fest. If it chops its way higher or lower, that's not easy to trade. But I'm gonna wish everybody a very good trading day. I'm gonna leave it where we have it, and we'll pick it up again tomorrow.